In this question, you are given a bar graph as an array of integers and you are asked to calculate the maximum amount of water this graph will hold if you pour water from the top like this. As you can see, this graph holds three units of water, ignoring the breadth and the depth for simplicity. So, can you calculate how much water will the graph to the left and the one to the right will hold? It's probably pretty obvious that the one to the left won't hold any water at all, while the one to the right, which may have taken you a little bit longer, will hold about four units of water. So how did you calculate that this bar graph would hold four units of water? Like most people, you might have realized that the water column above one cannot cross this or it will just overflow off, while the water column above three again cannot cross this height or it will just overflow off, leading to three units of water column here and one unit of water column here, giving us a total of four units of water column. Can we convert this into a formula that we could use in our algorithm? Yes. So the height of the water column above a particular bar, say above one, is the minimum of the tallest left-hand bar, which is phi, the tallest bar to the left of one, and the tallest bar to the right of one is four. So the minimum of phi and four is four minus the height of the bar, which is one. So this gives us a water column of length three. So we could use this formula to calculate the water column above every bar. Since there is no taller left-hand bar, we would assume this is zero here. Here we just calculated it as three. Here again it is phi, minimum of phi comma four, which is four minus three. Here again it's one. Again, there is no taller right-hand bar, so we just assume the water column here is zero. So now you just sum it up and it gives you four units of water column. So what would be the time complexity of this approach? For every column, you could go about calculating the tallest left-hand side and the right-hand side. Sorry, the tallest left-hand side and the tallest right-hand side. So this takes you O of n for each bar and we have n bars. So the total time complexity would be O of n square. However, using this approach that we saw in an earlier problem of calculating stock price, we could just keep track of the maximum value and decrease our time complexity. For example, we start here from the left hand side. We know that the tallest left hand bar to phi doesn't exist, so we just ignore that. The tallest left hand bar above 1 is phi. Just keep track of the maximum value. 1 is less than phi, so the tallest left hand bar above 3 is also phi. 3 is also less than phi, so the tallest left hand bar above 4 is also phi. Likewise, let's calculate the tallest right hand bar. 4 is the rightmost bar, so there is no tallest right hand bar. The tallest bar to the right of 3 is 4. The tallest bar to the right of 1 is also 4. The tallest bar to the right of 5 is also 4. Now, this is the water column that we have here, which is which boils down to, sorry, this boils down to 3 here and 1 here giving us a total of 4. We ignore, because we ignore this, this since this did not have a tallest right hand, sorry, tallest left hand column, so this is 0 here. 
minimum of five and four is four, four minus one is three here. Minimum of five and four is four, four minus three is one here. And we ignore this to zero. And now you just sum this all up here, giving you four. The time complexity is O of n because we just traversed this array to calculate the tallest left hand bars. We again traversed it right to calculate tallest right hand bars. And then we just had to take the difference and sum it up, giving us, we just had to go back again and sum it up. So we just traversed the array about two to three times, giving us a time complexity of O of n. However, we also need two additional arrays. It can actually be compacted to one, but that doesn't really matter. We also need two additional arrays to keep track of the tallest left hand and right hand bars. So the memory complexity is also O of n. So with a memory complexity of n, we managed to decrease the time complexity from n square to n.